During their playing days, they used to say 12 plus 83 equals 6. Jim Kelly to Andre Reid one more time at the end of Reid's Hall of Fame enshrinement speech. And Kelly, not done with his weekend, also flipping the coin prior to Sunday's Hall of Fame game. Big weekend for a man who's battling through some tough times right now, Matt Ferry. Yeah, Jane, a weekend filled with great moments. Kelly to Reid might have been the best. Seeing Kelly in attendance gave us all a glimpse of Kelly tough. It's a mantra. Jim Kelly says his family has lived by dating back to his upbringing in East Brady, Pennsylvania. After 11 years in the NFL and a Hall of Fame career, Kelly is now facing his toughest challenge, cancer. Since first being diagnosed in 2013, he's endured surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. He's lost weight, his hair, and a part of his jaw where the cancer was growing. In this Sports Center featured in conjunction with Outside the Lines presented by Verizon, Kelly and those closest to him describe his personal battle, taking his fight public, hoping to help others and give them strength. Number 12 from the Buffalo Bills. My name is Jim Kelly. I'm a husband, a father. And he didn't hesitate. That's why he's number one quarterback in the league. A Hall of Fame quarterback. And I have cancer. As I sit in the chairman today, I know that I'll never be the same. The guy asked me, did you ever think about dying? No, but until you hear the word cancer, yeah, you, you, you think about it. In early June of 2013, I knew something wasn't right. He was having a lot of trouble orally with his teeth. He was just having a lot of pain and struggle with the inside of his mouth, and no one could ever really seem to figure out what was wrong. I remember walking into the doctor's office, and when I saw him walking over and shutting the door, I knew, prepare yourself for the worst. He said, unfortunately, Jim, there's cancer. It really didn't give me too much of a prognosis that you're gonna die in six months, or you're gonna beat this, you're gonna live. I really didn't know what to do, didn't know where to turn. I remember getting back in my car, and tears started coming to my eyes. Having to tell your loved ones that you have cancer, it's hard because you don't want to hurt them, especially your kids. I could see like the tears in his eyes and that he was scared. I mean, we were all scared because we didn't know what was happening. My initial fear was, is he going to live? Is this going to take his life? So this is our treatment plan in CAT scan here. And then the other image is the brain MRI. Squamous cell carcinoma, cancer of the V2 um, nerve that runs through the front of your face, through your cheekbone, and my upper jaw. Um, my upper jaw, pretty much on my whole left side, has been removed. Um, all the way up through my nasal cavity. After Jim had his surgery, we were so encouraged and hopeful because the doctor was like, we got it all. And in my mind, when he said that, that meant that the cancer is gone. The headaches were to a point where I couldn't even handle them anymore. He came in and shut the door. He was holding his head and said, Dan, I can't take this anymore. He said, there's gotta be something wrong. That's when he went down and they uh, did an MRI and they found out that it had returned. This is the stuff along the nerves here that was involved that's causing your pain. Right there. Touch. As you start going through things and as you start going through surgeries and the reoccurrence of the cancer, you start having small doubts like, where's this going? Is it going to get worse? Uh, yeah, you think about, oh, is am I going to die? There were definitely moments where I felt that this was probably going to be it. 
And um, that was really hard. He would have three rounds of chemotherapy, the strongest, most potent kind of chemotherapy um, that is used with a cancer like this. He was throwing up continuously. I mean, literally every 10, 15 minutes for the next 10 days. Father, um, I just thank you so much for life. I thank you for the doctors uh, that are here and the machines who work to get rid of cancer, not only for me, but for everyone else. Little did I know how brutally he would be attacked by this disease. Are you ready? There's your flash. I might have something. I've lost 51 pounds. As I sit here today, I still have no, um, no taste buds. I have no saliva, which is probably the worst of all of it. And I've numbness completely on the left side of my face. The roller coaster I've been going through with cancer has just pretty much been my life. The phrase that my family lives by is the word Kelly Tough. Going to all those Super Bowls. No good. Wide right. You lose and you do it four years in a row. And then my son was born, the excitement again, you're at the top of the mountain. And then four months later, he's diagnosed with a fatal disease. Then there's my only son, Hunter, born on February 14th, Valentine's Day, my birthday, the son I've always wanted. But within four months, my son was diagnosed with a fatal disease called Crab A leukodystrophy. And it has been written throughout my career that toughness is my trademark. Well, the toughest person I've ever met in my life is my hero, my soldier, my son, Hunter. I love you, buddy. Shortly after that, uh, you know, my son passing away. I don't complain and I don't cry about different things because I saw what my son went through. Uh, I saw the fight that he had every single day of his life. We have been through just loss unspeakable and to know that Aaron and Cameron might not have their dad to walk them down the aisle and it's just it's awful. Hi, When I was in the hospital, it was pretty much a blur. But I do remember vividly family and friends that came to see me. That's what kept me going. The prayers, the cars, the, the well wishes. We have piles and piles of just letters and posters saying we're praying for Jim Kelly. <laughs> Whether it was Dan Marino or whomever, he would smile for them and be up for them. Walk out that door. It was amazing. I know I could not have done this without family and friends, and you guys have been here from day one. Thank you. I just got a long way to go, but I know with you people on my team, I'll be here for many, many more years and many, many more parties and gatherings. So thank you, guys. Thank you. That was something I desperately needed. I needed that uplifting, knowing that I just went through the last one. It was really cool to see him smile because everybody was cheering him on, and I was right there beside him. Never in a million years I thought that 
I would be seeing people that had never met in my life that had Kelly Tuff t-shirts made up. Good to see you. Well, thank you very much. And, and your wife, too. Oh, my. Yeah, she's behind the camera. <laughs> Just watching him and being Hi. with him and taking care of him have truly taught me what it means to be Kelly Tough. I plan on beating this. That's why I continue to do things I love and enjoy. You ready? You ready? Go get it. I don't want you to leave for you hold my hand. Oh, won't you stay with me? Cause you're all I need. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Wow. No one's going to go look at his self-control. But you can lay with me so it doesn't hurt. Oh, won't you stay with me? Cause you're all I need. You know, when you talk about cancer, people always talk about stage four, stage three. Um, nobody ever told me, and I wasn't going to ask. Um, I don't want to know, don't really care to know. I just take it day by day, knowing it down the road. There's only one person that knows the outcome. That's the good Lord. I don't want him to die. I don't want him to die. I want him to stay here. I want him to live. My fear is that I don't know what tomorrow holds and that um, today could be the last day or tomorrow could be. My biggest fear is the unknown. People always talk about bucket lists. My biggest bucket list is walk my two daughters down the aisle. And that's something that I'm going to strive to do. I have to crawl there. Mm, what a story. With his chemotherapy and radiation treatment completed, Jim Kelly must now wait. Later this month, he will return to his doctors for an MRI that should determine whether he is cancer-free. Kelly says he is, quote, not afraid to die, and he is choosing to live his life in these next few weeks in the present with hope that he will have a long future ahead of him.